We're talking pelargoniums today on Pots and Trowels, and that's brought to you with the support of Cobra Garden and Dalak. Hello and welcome to Pots and Trowels. Well, as you can see, I'm surrounded by these beautiful pelargoniums at the moment. They are really amazing plants. And to find out a little bit more about them and how to grow them, I'm going to have a chat with a friend of mine who is a leading authority in pelargoniums, and that's Helen Bainbridge. So, hello, Helen. Hi, Martin. Well, these are amazing, aren't they? These are just some of your private collections. So, tell us a little bit about pelargoniums, where they come from, and, and just a little bit about the many types of pelargonium. Mm. Well, pelargoniums originate from South Africa, but all the ones that I grow are pretty much hybrids rather than um, species mm. varieties. But yeah, they're fantastic, really free flowering, really vibrant colours. They come in all different types. We've got the regal varieties. Okay, so regal is... Which is, is this one here at the front. Yeah. They're um, short flowers, really fluffy, full flowers, bright colours, carried on short stems, and they're really free flowering. There's the unique pelargoniums. These were introduced in the Victorian period. Really, again, free flowering, will take lots of sun. Um, the zonal pelargoniums, this is a basic zonal, Sophie Emma, which is a super salmon flower, really pretty. Is, is that what you would call a double as That's well? That's a double flowered right, one, yeah, okay. they're stunning. Flowering, really free flowering. They're also good in houses, they're good in conservatories, they will take the heat of a, a yeah. conservatory. Um, there are the netted zonals with these lovely um, veined leaves which are really attractive single flower on that one and the zone on refers to the fact that some of them have a sort of a darker marking yes. on the leaf isn't they've it? got a horseshoe zone um in the leaf that one doesn't show it very much but no. some of them oh, do have a darker here, doesn't it if we yes. look at that one there yeah we can see there that the leaf has just got this darker the area horseshoe. there and some are much more pronounced than that as that's well that's right they? so yes okay so we've got pelargoniums regals we've got zonals We've um, got miniature zonals, Martin. Have you seen these? These are amazing. This is a tricolour miniature, and it's the tricolour means three colours. Green, you've got a pink, red zone in there, and then a cream outer edge. Little see, red flowers. I, when I saw that earlier, I thought that was a cutting you'd take. So that, <laughs> that, how big will that get, that miniature? That will, should stay in a nine centimetre pot for about two or three years. You can repot it and change the soil rather mm -hmm. than pot it into a really big pot. But I would expect it only to be in a sort of four and a half inch, five inch pot in right. the next 10 years. Oh really? So they stay very small. They're great for windowsills right, if you haven't okay. got much room. Yeah. Okay, and then over this side, what have we got just here then? We've got scented leaf pelargoniums, which are stunning, and they come in a whole array of different scents. This one's camphor, camphor Can rose. Can smell it? Mm. So it's the leaf that's the scented. The leaf that's rather... strongly scented, yes. Oh yeah, it is, Really isn't it? nice. There's nutmeg, there's peppermint, cinnamon, you just can imagine whatever scent you want and there's a pelargonium with that scented leaf. some of them are grown mainly for the foliage but this one yeah. is... Uh... This one does have a, a massive flower. Um, it's actually, it's been so hot lately, it's, it's gone out of flower to an extent but it will keep pushing more okay. buds up and more flowers. And some of them have got really big blousy flowers as well, some of the scented. Right, okay. And then we're going on mm. to, I'm just going to move that out of the way and then we can see. This is one of my favourite angel pelargoniums. The angels have little flowers like violas on almost. This one's a variegated one which is really attractive. It's called Old Bridgeuette and it has these little sort of two-tone flowers. So are angels old as well because I, I hadn't heard of angels till yeah you know, angels the last 10 years. they were introduced in the 1920s early oh, wow. 30s oh, quite old, then. They, they went out of fashion and then they've been cut they've come back but there's been a lot of hybridizing done within the last sort of 20 years right. of them okay so they are really attractive yeah very free free flowering and then down at the front we've got we've got stellas here these are super star like flowers stella means star like this is a double flowered stella and this is a single flowered and they come in all different colors again um semi doubles doubles full size some miniature ones as well but they're great outside right. on patio pots yes. Yes, I've got a couple of those from you and they just flower and flower and flower. Yeah. And then down in the corner. Yeah, we, these are the ivy leaf pelargoniums. This one is croquetta. It's got the netting on the leaf, which makes it really attractive. And these semi-double flowers, which mm. are uh, really attractive. And it's it doesn't get too big, that one. It stays quite right, compact. Good in hanging baskets Very and containers. Very good in baskets and troughs, yeah. Yes. 
And then anything different in this? Little yeah, we've got an here. arrangement here. There's an angel, Henry Weller. There's a decorative uh, regal, which have got much longer flower stems mm. than the ordinary regals. A lovely two-tone one called... Um, Australian mystery and they're great because they whip around in the wind and they're not as brittle as the ordinary regal so they, they're really good in big pots and then a variegated ivy leaf called elb silver which again is quite compact so it just gently trails over the edge. And this is just a few of many many more isn't it? Yes. <laughs> So often they're referred to, especially the zonals, as geraniums, but they aren't actually geraniums, are no, they? No, they're in the same family. They're in Geraniaceae, but all pelargoniums are tender plants, and geraniums, the true geranium, right. is a hardy garden right. perennial. Right, so they're a, yes, so they're same totally family, different but they are different. At. Yes, That's right. Okay, and what about conditions then? Because obviously I know uh, some of these plants are quite old. You, you keep mm -hmm. them for many, many years. So how do we overwinter them? At this time of the year, they're fine outside, but what do we do come winter? So come the autumn, you need to think about bringing them in, trim them back. If they're in containers outside, lift them, repot them into slightly smaller pots and then trim them back so they're in a nice rounded shape. So you're mm -hmm. taking all the flower off and quite a bit of the long growth that they've produced through the summer. So right. you're cutting them back to just above the old wood, about two to three leaf joints above the old wood. And that's the same for the regals, the angels yeah. and the... The That's zonals. the same with all and of them. And temperature over winter? Above frost, above freezing, so frost-free greenhouse right. is fine. If you can give them some heat, sort of five degrees, that's ideal. Mm. Or a heated conservatory they would love. But if you've only got two or three degrees, um, they will tick over. They'll be fine. Survive. Keep them on the drier side and you can also put some fleece over them if it's going to be really cold. Because you no longer exhibit at the shows because you used to exhibit at the Chelsea Flower Show, Hampton yeah. Court, Tatton, mm -hmm. Harrogate Flower Shows and all, all the major flower shows and one of, you know, probably hundreds in total of gold medals. And some of your plants I remember from your displays were huge. Yeah. They must have been very old. Yeah, some of our plants were sort of up to 20 years old. We had standards that were 20 years old and uh, some of the varieties uh, which one we've got here Bolero this one here we used to have plants that were five foot high and five foot across wow. um, so they were really huge and in great big containers two foot across so as long as you've got the room and you can overwinter them, you, you know, it's not a seasonal, not a one no. year plant. You can keep them for many, many years. That's right. And they do become quite woody, but you just cut them back each year yeah. and repot them, feed them constantly through the summer and they'll go on year after year. Because they, although we think of them coming from South Africa, we think, you know, dry, arid, but these are actually quite greedy plants, aren't they? They are. They're really, because these are hybrids that have been bred for mm. constant flowering, big blousy flowers, as opposed to the species that have right. got very small, fine, delicate flowers they need lots and lots of feed to keep them in good condition so if you've got these in a pot you bought one from a garden center this year um, pot it up gradually but then feed it on a weekly basis definitely with yeah if it hasn't got any slow release fertilizer in the compost you can liquid feed it with a high okay. potash feed either every time you water but at least once a week right. and when we were showing them we would feed them every watering with a high okay. potash so here we are now in the height of summer you know these are probably at their best flower wise uh, is this the time to start thinking about more plants for next year for yeah, propagating? Yeah, you can propagate the zonal types now. Mm -hmm. So stellas, dwarf zonals, miniature zonals, absolutely fine. I would save uh, re uh, propagating the angels until the winter months. Okay. So what I would do with the angels is cut the flowers off in the autumn, the new growth that comes won't have any flowers or buds. That's the best propagating yes. material for regals and angels. Yeah. Which makes sense because you, you wouldn't get a cutting off that now, would no, you? No, they just want to flower. flower. Everyone's flowering. But uh, zonal, stellas right. are a type of zonal. You can propagate those now. Absolutely no problem. So are you going to show us, this is a, yeah. a stella here. Um, are you going to show us the Helen Bainbridge way? <laughs> this is how you grow I your award-winning plants. Of course, yes. And this is when you, you did it the same way when you were growing thousands and thousands of plants yes, a year. Yes, everything was, all the cuttings were taken individually by hand. So firstly, find a stem, a nice straight stem. I'm going to use a sharp knife here and just gently cut through that stem there. You can use secateurs to remove it. So that's our cutting that there. there. It's got a flower on which we don't want, so just support the, the main stem because they are a bit brittle, some of them, and snap out the flower. Then you've got a little bud in there 
which needs to come out because we don't want it to put its energy into flowering so that just comes out just check there's no others because these plants will flower themselves silly and there's usually a bud following but mm. that's quite clear and then i'm going to remove these larger leaves until i've just got three left so there's one two three and a little tiny one just coming in the center and that would be the same even if it's one of the larger leaf yes. zonals it's that's the yeah. of three leaves if the leaves are really huge i would just leave two okay. but for these small leaf varieties three is right. the standard and then i'm going to trim this length of stem back you can see there it's quite knobbly there was a leaf there so i'm going to literally cut through about a millimetre underneath okay. that leaf joint. So quite a small cut in for these. Obviously, some mm -hmm. of them are going to be a bit longer if they're naturally stronger and bigger growing. But yes. Is the ideally smaller cut in yeah. better? Yeah, a, 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 sm a short length of stem because the um, rooting hormone of a plant naturally is in the tip of it. And what it does, once you remove that cutting from the plant, the hormone is sent back down the stem, which causes a callus at the bottom. Right. And that's where we're going to get the roots coming right. from. So all we need to do now is take um, a pot of compost. This is my own mix. So you don't like the way I do it. When I was an apprentice, <laughs> which is 45 years ago, before you were born, Helen, um, the, uh, we used to do uh, clay pots, three and a half or four inch clay pots with five cuttings around. Yes. But you don't like that method, do you? I know I don't because I just find that once you've got them rooted, all the individual cutting, sorry, the, all the cuttings around the pot, you've got to break the roots yeah. apart, damaging them to actually repot them individually. Yes. So I use one little two inch pot and then I literally just stick the cutting in about a quarter of an inch, a couple of centimetres, something like that. Firm it in lightly. Uh, I'll keep the soil moist while it's rooting. Um, if, if it's cold weather, I would put them on a, a propagator so they've got heat coming up from the bottom um, at 70 degrees, bottom heat. Um, and I know that that's got three leaves on. It'll take about, this time of year, about a week just over to mm -hmm. start to put some roots down. I give it a light mist spray, but I won't cover it with anything while it's rooting. And then it should start to produce new leaves from the centre. I'll know it's rooted and then I will knock it out, have a look if the roots have come round, I will pot it on into a nine centimetre pot. So just a little bit bigger right. and that will soon grow away. Okay. Once it's grown a little bit, I'll take the growing point out, which will make it side shoot. The more side shoots you can get, the more flowers you'll Absolutely. get. Absolutely. And that would be the stage you would then overwinter it if you're taking them now in the yes. middle of the summer. Yeah, they'll be fine in this pot and then repot next in year into a little bit bigger pot, about an inch right. bigger. And how long would it take from that to, this is the one you took the cutting off? Is yeah, that is about two, two and a half years right. old, something okay. like that. It's a dwarf Stella, so it doesn't get huge. But you would still get a flowering plant next year with that Yes, one. that'll flower. That'll even flower this year. Oh, right. They're really yeah. quick. Once they're rooted and make some new side shoots, they're in flower within about six weeks. Brilliant. Yeah. So it's amazing, really. And, you know, you grow lots of them and, and all these lovely old varieties and keep them going. So it's something people should be growing, shouldn't yeah, they? Yeah, definitely. They're really good value for money they'll give you masses of flower right through the summer and the stellar ones if you've got a heated conservatory or heated win you know windowsill in the house in the winter they'll carry on flowering all winter as well wow can't get better than that yeah. thank you Helen. <laughs> thank you Thank you for watching Pots and Trials. Next time, we're going to be catching up in the greenhouse, looking at the melons and the cucumbers. So we'll see you then. Bye. Mm -hmm.